Hello boys and girls, welcome back for a new week of science videos. This week we will be talking about tools, technology, and careers that you can have in the future with those things. So before we jump into the text and before it gives away some answers, I want you to stop and think for a second about some tools that you might use every day. So tools are things that help us make our life easier. They make things a little bit better. They could be something simple. They could be something complex. So think about things that you use at your house and things that you use at school. What are some things that make your life a little bit easier? So maybe something that helps you write, maybe something that helps keep you healthy. So think about some things that you use at home or at school, a tool that you use every single day. So I'm going to let you brainstorm for a minute and then I'll give you my answers. All right, so some of the tools that I'm thinking about that help make my life easier would be a toothbrush. So instead of using my finger and putting toothpaste on there and brushing my teeth, somebody created a toothbrush. That is a tool that helps make brushing your teeth easier, which in turn makes your body more healthy. It helps your teeth stay clean. It stops all those cavities. So that's a tool that I use every day. Um, if I want to eat some breakfast, maybe a bowl of cereal, I don't want to eat my cereal by tipping up my bowl or using my hands to eat my cereal. What do you use to eat your cereal? A spoon. So a spoon is a tool that you might use at home to make your life a little bit easier. Um, if you need to go somewhere um, and it's really, really far away and it might be a little bit too far to walk, a car makes my life a little bit easier because I can jump in and drive to where I need to go. So if you came up with some tools, great job scientists. We are going to talk a little bit more about them today in our text. So we're going to read about that and then we're going to talk about some different tools that the book describes as well. <clears throat> So tools help us do things. What tools do you use every day? So if you came up with some tools right off the bat, you are super smart, kiss your brain. Maybe we had some of the same ones. The book is going to give us a few other examples as well. So in this picture, they are using a shovel as the tool so that they can dig soil to make plants. We talked about soil last week. So I wonder if you did any of those cool experiments or you know, classifying rocks that we talked about. So if you did that, great job. This picture in the middle says you need a hammer to build a birdhouse. So if you don't have all your materials, if you don't have the wood, if you don't have the nails or the hammer, your birdhouse might not look like a birdhouse. So having a hammer that's also made out of rocks and minerals makes our lives a little bit easier. And finally at the bottom, it's saying that scissors are tools too. So what do scissors help us do? They help us cut things. So all three of those things on the page are tools. Tools are things that help us with everything in life. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about tools and how they work together with technology. So all the tools and ideas that we use are called technology. So it doesn't matter, like I said, if it's something simple or if it's something really complex that somebody worked on for a really, really long time. If it's a tool that helps us do something and the ideas in our brain or inventions that, cr that we create are technology. So I know most people think of technology as computers and phones and all of that electrical stuff, but technology is any Thing that helps make our lives a little bit easier by using tools and ideas that we come up with. So technology usually makes our lives better. It can help us travel. It can help us communicate and stay healthy and safe. People have always used tools and ideas. New ideas and tools can make work easier. So in this page, we also have another tool. We have a broom and a broom helps us make our house clean because we are using it to sweep up all those little bits of dirt and crumbs and all of that that are too hard to pick up with our fingers. So can you think of all the dirt or pet hair or food that you drop on the floor or all of the pieces of paper in our classroom? Can you imagine if you had to go around and pick up all of those things off the floor? That would be kind of tricky. So Miss Owen is really glad that brooms exist because that is a tool that I can use every day that makes my life a little bit easier. 
So there are different kind of tools that we have now and things and tools that were created in the past. And some of them we still use. And there are other people that make things and tweak them. They change them a little bit to make them better and more updated and a little bit newer. So that's what they're talking about on this page right here. We have tools then and now. So this is an older tool right here. It looks like we have some horses that are kind of carrying this tractor. So a long time ago that that was considered a tractor. Some people might still use it like this, but it almost looks like that he is pulling that tractor so that they can do things with their crops. But somebody used their brain and they used those ideas that are in their head. They used technology and they said, I think that we can make this tractor a little bit better. And so they modernized it and they made it more efficient so that it can run smoother and it can get more crops done quicker. So although both tools are very helpful, people use them in different ways and they change them to make our lives better and easier. I don't know if you watch the show Shark Tank, boys and girls. I know some of your parents might watch it. I watch it sometimes, but people come in front of all of these people that have money that want to invest. They want to give their money to these people because they've come up with either tools or a type of technology that is going to make our lives better and easier. And they're inventors and they come up with things that are either brand new that we've never heard of, or they're changing things a little bit and they're making them better. So if you are really creative and you have some really good ideas about how to make different tools or use the use of technology, then we're going to talk a little bit about that this week. So technology can help us. Technology depends on science and science depends on technology. So they both work together. We have technology and we have science. And that's what subject we're talking about right now. So we're tomorrow or on Friday, we're going to talk a little bit more about some careers that you can have in technology. So if you really like science, make sure you check out the video on Friday because we're going to talk about some different jobs that you can have in the future where your talents can really shine. So look out for that video in the future. Um, technology can tell us about the weather. So we can see in this picture that the students are using the computer to look at the weather. But look at this picture, boys and girls. Look at this computer. Look at how big it is. Look at the shape. Look at the size. Does that look like the computer that you have at home or in your classroom? Probably not. This is an older computer. Um, it's definitely not new and updated with the technology that we have now. And that just shows you that technology is always changing and always getting better. So right now, if you think about all the technology and the computers that we have, our classrooms have laptops where we can actually pick up our computer and take it where we need to go. Um, this computer, you couldn't do that. It had to stay right there on that table. You could not pick that up and take it to your bedroom or take it to the kitchen so that you can do your homework. We weren't allowed to do that um, because they were stuck to the wall in an outlet. So technology has really changed. The same information that's on that computer is also on our phone now, and that goes everywhere with us if you have a cell phone. So that's like a mini computer, and somebody used science and technology and different tools to create that so it'll make our lives easier. The same goes for the telescope at the top of the page. Somebody really wanted to look at stars and planets and learn more information about them, but they are so far up in the sky, they had to come up with a tool and use science and technology together to make a tool that will make it easier to study the planets and the stars. So what a telescope does is it has like a magnifying glass that's really, really powerful so that when you look through that hole, you can see really far out. So if we didn't have a telescope, if we didn't have those tools that somebody created and worked on and made better, we might not know that much information about stars and planets. So technology and scientists are so important that they work together so that we're able to get new things every single day. <clears throat> 
Sometimes helpful tools can harm us though. And remember harm kind of means the same as to hurt. So even though technology is really helpful and it can be really good for us, sometimes technology isn't the best. So we have to be careful about how we use them. So for example, we have our chart right here that tells us um, three different things that are helpful and harmful, not that good for us. So if we look at the car, on the plus side, cars help us get from place to place. If we wanna go somewhere far away, we can get in the car, we can fill it up with gas, and we can go visit a friend that lives 30 minutes away. But cars can also pollute the air. And if you remember from last week, pollute means to make it dirty. So if you look at this image, you see all that smoke and all those gases that are coming out of the car. Even though a car is really useful, all of that gas and all of the, that smoke and those chemicals that are going into the air, it's not good for the air. It's not good for us to breathe in. So even though cars are helpful, they're also a little bit harmful. They're not great for the environment. The second one is medicine. So there are medicines that help us stay healthy. Um, if you get sick, your doctor might give you some medicine to help you feel better if you have a cough or a fever. But sometimes medicine isn't good for our bodies and our bodies react to them. So sometimes people will take medicine and it will make their stomach hurt or it might make them sick and throw up. It might, um, sometimes when people have um, really bad kind of illnesses, sometimes medicine will make their hair fall out or you know, it'll affect their hearing and it'll make you lose some of your hearing. So even though most of the time medicine is good and it's helpful, it can also be harmful. So when we think about technology, all of the technology isn't good all the time, Sometimes technology can hurt us a little bit. And finally, on our chart, we have music. So music players like your iPad or um, like a CD player or something like that. You have your AirPods or your headphones or whatever you use. Um, we like to listen to music. That's really fun. We get to hear all kinds of different music. But if you listen to it too loud and you listen to it all the time, it might mess up your hearing and it might be harder for you to hear um, if you play your music a little bit too loud. So we have all these different types of technology that makes our life easier and it makes things better, but we have to be really careful when we look at technology because it could also be harmful. So before we do our little activity, we're going to jump into how this looks in real life. And these are two places that you might go pretty often. One of them is the doctor and the other one is the dentist. So can we see inside our body? No, but did you know that a machine can? Um, if you've ever been to the doctor, if you've ever broken a bone or you're not feeling really good and something really hurts, your doctor might take you to an x-ray machine and an x-ray takes special pictures because it goes through your skin and it goes through your muscles and all the doctor can see is your bones. So if we look at this picture right here, this arrow is pointing to a little bitty break right here. Maybe somebody fell down and they broke their arm. So if you go to the doctor and you say, my arm hurts really, really bad, doctor, can you please help me? The doctor cannot see your bones. He might think that it's broken, but the x-ray machine is a type of technology that helps him do his job better and it helps him get you healthy by figuring out what to do. So I bet the doctor took pictures and x-rays of this little girl's arm and he probably saw the picture of her bone and said, yep, it's broken. We need to put your arm in a sling or a cast so that that bone can straighten up and it can heal. Another place that you might go is the dentist. And the dentist takes x-rays too because they want to see how your teeth are growing. So if you are younger, you may not have a bunch of dental x-rays yet, but when you get older, you definitely will because you have your baby teeth and then you have your adult teeth that are underneath. So once you lose all your baby teeth, your adult teeth will come in 
and your doctor and your dentist like to take x-rays of your teeth to make sure that you don't have any cavities, to make sure that your teeth aren't infected, and they use those pictures and your dental x-rays so that they can figure out what's wrong. So if we look at this picture of the teeth, I see some teeth that are underneath right here. Some of them might be a little bit crooked. Um, and so if you have a cavity because you've eaten too much candy or you're not brushing your teeth all of the time, the dentist can put something in your mouth and they'll take pictures of all the different places in your mouth and get x-rays of your teeth so the dentist can figure out what's wrong and can help you. So it looks like this, you bite down on it. So you can't, don't need to be scared. These machines don't hurt you. This technology doesn't hurt you, um, but it can help us and our doctors figure out what's wrong. So we're gonna flip back and do our think, talk, and write. It's kind of like our little review of the chapter, our little quiz time. And we have our word bank over here. So we have our tool, something that helps us. And technology, technology is the tools and our ideas that help make our lives easier. So number one says, something that helps us do things is a, what, tool or technology? Tool, okay, number two, the tools and ideas we use to make our lives easier are called tool or technology. Technology, very good. Number three says, what are some ways that technology helps us? So think about tools, think about those x-ray machines, think about cars. How do those things help us? Okay, they make our lives easier. It might make something more fun. It makes things more efficient. Okay, and finally, it says, what are some ways that technology harms us or hurts us? Remember, not every piece of technology is all good. Sometimes there are parts of technology that could have bad side effects or things that are not good for the environment. So what are some ways that technology can hurt us? Okay, so if we're thinking about a car, it could pollute our environment. Something that could hurt us would be um, medicine if we have some bad side effects if we're sick. So think about that when you're thinking about technology. It's most of the time it's very helpful, but there are some pieces of technology that are harmful. And so here's our little art link right here. If you want to draw a picture of two tools that you use, it might be something different than what we talked about in the text. So if you want to draw two pictures of tools that you have either at school or at home or one of each, and you can draw um, and write a sentence about how it makes things easier, how they help you solve problems, and maybe you can think about a way that it might hurt us as well if we don't use it appropriately, if we use it too much, so think about that. All right, so finally, before we leave and close out this video, I wanted to show you the instructions for a tech activity, and this is how you can make a tool at home. So most of you probably have a broom at home because that makes sweeping a little bit easier. You might even help your mom or your dad or your grandparents sweep up the kitchen or outside or something like that. So if you have a broom, that's fine, but if you want to make your own broom and see if it works better or if it's worse, then you can do this little extension activity and what you would need would be a paper towel tube so make sure it's empty don't take all the paper towels off your paper towel roll just to do this experiment you need some scissors a paper plate and some tape so um, Miss Owen doesn't have a paper towel tube right now. I don't wanna take off all of my paper towels to do this experiment, but I did want to show you that you could do this tool experiment at home if you want to, if you wanna do this extension activity. Remember to always ask your parents for permission and for help if you're using anything, if you're cutting anything up, and to make sure that you're not using up all of their materials. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your paper towel tube as the handle of your broom and you're going to cut the paper plate and put it on the end of the paper towel roll. So you might wanna tape it there. You could put the little pieces and put them inside the paper plate. Like if you cut the little prongs like you have on your brush, you can maybe connect it that way. And you use the 
paper as like your dustpan. So I think it would be really cool if you tried to make your own broom at home and try to sweep an area of your, of your house or in the kitchen or outside and tell me if it is like a real broom and if it's easier or if it's harder to use that broom. And if you do that, make sure that you show me um, a picture and you send it to us on the Facebook page so we can see how you're using those tools every single day and make sure that you come back on Friday so that we can talk about all the different careers or jobs that you could have in technology using those tools and using science. So I will see you next time, boys and girls. Have a great day.